Cakelock is a useful open source tool when you need a reliable authentication system for your application. However, to maintain this reliability as your user base grows, a cluster might be necessary. An efficient infrastructure will be a load balancer distributing tasks among multiple Cakelock nodes, all sharing the same database. If one or multiple nodes go down, your Cakelock authentication will remain operational. So in this video, I will teach you how to deploy and manage this infrastructure with a tool called Terraform, which is adequate to automate most of the work. If you like simplicity and want to save time, it will be perfect for you. With Terraform, you will be able to deploy your cluster with a single bash command. The Cakelock node, the Postgres database, and the load balancer. You don't have to connect to any of these resources that will be automatically configured by Terraform. In 10 minutes, you would just be able to use the Cakelock cluster for your application. And when you want to scale your cluster, you just have to add an entry to this array in this file. Don't worry, we will write together this file later. But then when you run again the same command, the node will join the cluster nicely and well configured. You can also downscale your cluster if you don't need that much power anymore, and it's totally safe, quick, with no loss data. That was just a small demonstration of what we will build together with the power of Terraform. You noticed that we don't have to connect to any VM, we don't have to find a working Docker Compose, a good settings. So how is it possible? Let's find it together. Let's explore some explanation together and just after, don't worry, we will together write uh, our infrastructure and we will deploy a cluster. So how it works? We'll use the magic of Terraform. If you don't know about it, it's a free popular dev tool that introduces the concept of infrastructure as code. You write a desired infrastructure with line of code and Terraform knows how to deploy it on a provider step by step. You may ask yourself how Terraform knows how to deploy it. It's because provider write an adapter to synchronize their API to Terraform. You can see every available provider and their documentation on the registry website. And for this tutorial, we will use the LS2 provider for the following reasons. It has a provider compatible with Terraform. Also, it has all the resources we need for our cluster, which are a load balancer, managed Cakelook services, and different database. We will use PostgreSQL for this tutorial. And these resources come pre-configured with security, DNS, SMTP, SSL, monitoring, alerts, backups, automated updates, migration, and so much more. I will be honest, it's a bit more pricey than some other provider, but you save time on these tasks. And as you know, time is really precious. You also get human support from a team of DevOps experts. So when you need help, there is always someone here to help you. Last thing, when you sign up, you will get free credits, so you can follow this tutorial for free and keep the cluster only if you like it afterward. The first step will be to install Terraform locally on your machine. I will put you the link in the description. You just have to follow the steps matching your OS. I am on Mac, so I will use Brew. Then you can verify the installation if you run the command terraform help. After that, we will look for some code that we will copy and paste to save time. So you can go on Google and search Terraform Elistro Provider. This is the documentation you have to read if you want to go further when you use Elistro with the Terraform tool. But in our case, for this tutorial, you can go on the overview section and you will find modules. You will see one module named Keklo Cluster. You can click on it. You can also look for it on the search bar. You can see this module as a library that will reduce the number of code you have to write by yourself if you want to deploy this Keklog cluster. So we will learn to use this module together and we will follow the step-by-step -step section. The first step is to store some secrets in a new file, terraform.tfvars file. So let's pass this code in this file and let's fill each secret. You can follow each link to do every step. So I have already an Elistio account. 
and I will follow the second link to create my API token that I will keep it safe, don't worry, I will delete it after this video <laughs> and I will paste it in my secret file. Also, I will generate a Keycloak password, so it will be the password used by Keycloak services. I can just follow this link that just generate a, a random secret password every time I reload the page and I will paste it in my file. The next step is to create an SSH key. I recommend to create a new one for more safety. So you can execute the same command, SSH cajun, and it will create a local directory SSH key that we will use later in this module. I will also execute git init command to initialize my directory as a git repository in case later I want to share it with my team. And in a dot git ignore file, I will add few files that must be ignored for more safety. Of course, I don't want to leak my SSH key and I want to leak my secrets. The next step, we will create main.tf file. This is where the main configuration will be stored. And you can copy all this block of code and paste it. And you can already check if your setup is good. So you can execute the command terraform init. So it will install all the terraform dependency in your directory. And then you can execute the command terraform apply. So let's see what this command will do. So let's expand this window. And as you can see, terraform will always tell you before doing something what it will do. So it tells you that it will create a project with your provider. And if you have, if you write yes, it will tell you that it created. And you can now go on the Illustrator dashboard and normally <laughs> the project will be created. Yes, it was created. But let's go further. If you update the name of the project in the configuration and if you run again the Terraform apply command, what it will tell you? It will tell you that it will update it. So yeah, Terraform is able to know what change in your configuration. And if you confirm the change, it will perform for you on your provider. So there on LSTO. So let's continue to the next step. Inside our project, we will add a PostgreSQL database. And the first thing you can see is that we can choose where we want to host this database. And if you follow the readme instruction, I will put the link in the description, there is a guide about how to choose yourself or to know all the available options. And basically you can do that by faking creating a service manually via the Elistro dashboard. So I can fake to create a PostgreSQL service. I can see all provider, all data center, or service plan, server type, and I can see the monthly price, and there is a button like copy Terraform configuration, and then you can copy them with the Terraform format and paste it in your configuration. Voila, so I will just give it a simple plan, a very small plan for this tutorial. And now we can use a module that will handle like the Keycloak node, so we can copy the code and paste it. And in this module block, what we can see, we can see the URL of the module. We can see it will be inside our project. We will stick null to keep the latest version of Keycloak. Uh, for the database, you can see that we use a secret that will be created by the above database. So perfect. There is like a dependency system in Terraform. We can replace the SSHK by the one we created locally. So Terraform point dot pub and terraform and here we have our node so each entry in this array will be a node so you can have one you can have two you can have three you can choose a number of you want we will stick with two for the moment and i will keep the suggested configuration so now we can add our load balancer that will distribute the request between every nodes I will keep the default config and you can see that we configure the load balancer with the created nodes ID. And also we have our forward rules that uh, configure what type of request we redirect. And to finish, we just have to add three outputs. So I will show you what are these outputs in few seconds. 
And if you try to run Terraform apply right now, you can see an error that because we added a module, we have to update the dependency of the project. So let's run Terraform in it one time again before. So now we can run Terraform apply. It will take less than 10 minutes to deploy your database, to deploy the nodes, to configure the nodes, and finally to create a load balancer. So you can just enjoy your good coffee, you can relax yourself, and you can maybe play some games, but you have nothing to do manually. After these eight, 10 minutes, your cluster will be finally deployed. But let's check together if everything went well. So let's go to the dashboard to admire all the infrastructure set up, all the infrastructure deployed, and the load balancer also. You can go on the first KCLOG node and we will watch the logs together. And inside the logs, uh, if everything went well, there is no error message. And also you can see some logs about rebalancing with members. So you, you can see that we have two members in the cluster. Also you can see, if you look for it, that we started the Ifini span, the Gboss stuff. So it looks that everything is good, our cluster looks working. There is an additional way to ensure your cluster is working and you have to access the database. Of course you can access it with the dashboard, but I want to show you that you have this information in Terraform also. So you can write the command Terraform output database admin and it will output you the secrets of your database. So we can use the secrets to log in the dashboard. And then you should find a table called ggroups ping. And if you watch the data in this table, you should see one row for each node. The cluster configuration uses this table to connect nodes each other together. In the output, you can also find the CNAME of the load balancer, which will guide you to the admin dashboard. If you refresh your page, you could be balanced between any of the working nodes because of the load balancer. You can also find the CNAME of each distinct node if you output them. So, as you can see, we have the CNAME of each node and they have the same user and the same password because they are clusterized. So, we can try to log in. So, let's try to log in on our KCLOCK dashboard. So, the login is root, the passwords and then it should be working. Uh, now we can try to add a node to our current infrastructure. So in this array, let's copy this node and let's paste it below. We will just change the server name, so we'll name it tree. And let's just run the same command, Terraform apply, and it will join the cluster nicely. It will be working with the load balancer. It will share the same data. So everything is good and you have nothing to do manually, you can just relax, play your game and just wait. Voila, after five minutes our node was created and it joined the cluster. You can see that if you refresh the table in your database, you can see three, three and three in the table. And of course you can run Terraform destroy and it will destroy all your infrastructure in a few seconds, few minutes. So if you did all the steps with me, you just deploy a complete KCLOCK cluster and you are not maybe a DevOps. So you see it was very easy. There is a ready to deploy example in the readme with all the code we did together. So you can check that if you need uh, help. I hope you learned something useful with this video. I will put all the link in the description that you need. And if you have any question, let a comment or write to the Illustrator support and we will be happy to help you. I recommend you to learn more about Terraform as it will save you a lot of time in your future infrastructure. And read the documentation, read the example uh, on the link I will give you. And look also to the other cluster module, there is a lot and they can help you to deploy very complicated infrastructure in a few minutes and scale it as you need and voila. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you the best for the next.